do 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 Welcome to Thursday Morning Conversations at Highland Presbyterian Church. I am Associate Pastor Doodle Harris, and with me today we have Renata DeWeese. Hi, Renata! Renata, we're glad that you and your dogs are on with us today. We can't wait uh, for more conversation <laughs> um, to come. But first, some announcements. One, Congratulations to the elders and deacons elected at the congregational meeting this past Sunday. Um, that was the shortest congregational meeting I think we've ever had. I'm trying not to show too much enthusiasm about that, but uh, that was such a fun time. Um, uh, speaking of that, next week we'll have some of our newly elected deacons on, um, so can't wait to, to meet them and talk about that. Next week, we have an exciting week at the church. On Tuesday night, Shrove Tuesday, Presby Jeopardy. It's going to be at 7 o'clock. It will be via Zoom or we'll broadcast it via Facebook at the same time. You can cheer on your favorites. We will have Angie Andriot, Megan Berry, our seminary intern, Kevin Burns, and Bill McConnell, all trying to see who knows the most random Presbyterian trivia. Renata, of those four, Angie, Megan, Kevin, Bill McConnell, do you have a favorite? A favorite? Who do you think is going to win? No, I don't have a favorite. I love all of those people, <laughs> but I think Kevin Burns is going to win. I think so. All right. Well, Kevin, that's what in your uh, corner. Do you want to vote on who's going to place and show? Mm, no, I don't. Okay. <laughs> wrong sport anyway. <laughs> anyway, I hope you'll join us next Tuesday night at seven. Um, test your skills against those folks and uh, maybe learn a little something about our church and denomination. Um, this Saturday, we were going to have the spread, um, the love scavenger hunt, but unfortunately that event has been canceled. And I'm sorry to say that. I was kind of looking forward to that, but it turns out that people um, are Families with children do not want to be outside in 19 degree weather for an hour with possible snow coming. That <laughs> felt like not a great idea. So we will postpone that uh, until March when hopefully it's a little warmer. And finally, next Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. We will have three worship services for that. One will be uh, pre-recorded and online at eight o'clock. It'll be a very traditional service out of our Book of Common Worship. At 5 p.m., we'll have the family worship service via Zoom. Let me know if you want the link to that, and I'll send it to you. And at 7 o'clock, we will have a live broadcast of Ash Wednesday worship from the sanctuary. Renata, I have a funny Ash Wednesday story. Do you want to hear it? Absolutely. Some years ago, I was in college, and uh, I was going to an Episcopal church at that point because that was the one across the street from campus, and that was the, the progressive church in town. And I went to their Ash Wednesday service and, and a little kid was coming up front and uh, I didn't hear what the priest said to him, but I heard him back, say back, butt dust. So, so you are butt dust and to dust you shall. I figured that, but it made me laugh. And I know we shouldn't laugh in Ash Wednesday services, but that was a good memory. All right, birthdays at the church this week from February the 7th to February the 13th, Mark Dobbins, Tom Raderer. Renata, I heard you wish Tom Raider a happy birthday. I did. Excellent. Happy birthday again, Tom. <laughs> Steffi Chilton, Shelby Nodler, Annie Bird, Tim Nowak, Larry Siegler, Noah Gambrell, uh, Kathleen Poole, who is the best office administrator ever. Thank you, Kathleen. You rock. Um, John Miller, Allison Cromer, Becky Morris, Jane Burbank, who is one of the best Montreat chaperones ever. Uh, Janie B is the kids caller. Um, Renata, I hope one day you make that list of the best Montreat chaperones ever. Oh, me too. <laughs> I hope it's sooner rather than later. We just don't know. Me too. <laughs> Happy birthday, Sally Coriel. Uh, Carl Soltow, Hardy Markham, and Haley Palmer. Wow, such great folks for birthdays. But now, Renata, it's about you. Now we are asking you questions. Renata, how long have you been at Highland? Well, I know exactly how long I have been at Highland because Dorothy, my oldest child, is almost 15 years old. And we first visited Highland when she was, I think, eight days old. 
Wow. Um, coming up on 15 years. Yes. <laughs> How did the whole congregation not just swarm around you with a tiny baby in your arms? Oh, they were nice. I mean, obviously we came back. <laughs> <laughs> It was great. We we felt welcome and we've been there obviously her whole life. Oh, that's so great. I do love Dorothy. She's a good one. She is uh, a good one. What's your favorite thing about Highland? Mama Rita's? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> probably the music and the children's and the youth programs and the children's music programs. And we miss them all a lot. Yeah. But I'm Although glad you said Mama Rita's. Mama Rita has gotten me through the pandemic. I'd say that to Amanda more than once. Like, it's good stuff. Yeah, good conversation. Um, yeah, good. I love it. All right, so you've been 15 years, Renata. It's long enough to have accumulated some T-shirts. I have. I have quite a collection. I have a Dorothy even has an entire bag, in hopes of having an eventual quilt. Oh, that's such a great idea. All right, what's your favorite one, Renata? Um, well, it was hard to choose, but I think uh, I'm, I'm wearing my favorite. It's the it's my Highland Prez Pride T-shirt. What's not to like about rainbows and everything that they might stand for? I agree. I agree. And you know that the messaging in that one is just so subtle. So, I mean, obvious, but not in your face. It's a good T-shirt. I agree. I agree. Um, I have three myself. Um, so you are here because you are chair of church in the world. Renata, most churches don't have a church in the world committee. What is that? They don't. A lot of churches would call our committee the missions committee um, or something similar to that. We call it church in the world. But if I could rename it, um, I would rename it the This Little Light of Mine committee. You know the song, This Little Light of Mine? Um, because I think our committee is the one that... Uh, gets to let our church's little light shine. We take that spark of God's love that we get to tend and fellowship and worship, and then we get to pass it along to our neighbors in Louisville and beyond. So our committee organizes our church's involvement with our partner organizations like Highlands Community Ministries, like KRM, Habitat for Humanity, La Casita, the Portland Food Pantry, the Cabbage Patch, and others. And we are the ones who bring you all those food and school supply drives and all the opportunities our church has to serve our neighbors. And we are also in church, uh, charge of our church's charitable giving. About 10% or a tithe, if you will, of our church's pledge income every year is passed along to other organizations and our committee decides how to spend it. So I've heard people dismiss the budget side of church in the world as like just spending money. And I get that budget spreadsheets never made it into the little light of mine song. <laughs> but if you don't think that money can create a little light and heat, I don't think that you're thinking about it very hard. <laughs> um, this past year, we distributed $163,000, uh, 163,801 dollars and 38 cents. And, and I hope it's burning pretty brightly in the, in the places that we sent it. That is so amazing. And I love the name change. I definitely think you should bring that up at session to see uh, to see if there's any traction there. I'm also curious who donated the one dollar and thirty eight cents. That's uh... <laughs> well, it, yeah, I think it was that. I think it was exactly that. I copied and pasted. <laughs> it was around one hundred and sixty four thousand dollars. <laughs> you know, the good news is I've also heard people say that because they know so much of what they give to Highland goes to all of the organizations and more that you just listed that they feel comfortable even giving a little more. I think that's such a huge testament to what you all do. Thank you. Um, so were we to have the scavenger hunt on Saturday, which we're not, but we are eventually later in March, um, the three organizations that we talked about um, that we, the children, we would ask children and families to support through that are HCM, KRM and Cabbage Patch. So. Can you tell us a little more about those three specifically? I would love to tell you more about those. They're all three organizations that um, that I feel strongly about and I love them all and I would love to tell you more about them. So um, I'll start with Highlands Community Ministries. Highlands Community Ministries used to be housed um, in, in the basement of the Methodist church that's kind of cat a corner to Highland Prez. Um, but 
gosh, I'm not sure, five years ago, maybe they they got their own own building at the corner of uh, Baxter. And it, it is so great. I don't know if how many people have had the opportunity to be in there pre pandemic. <laughs> Um, right. But after they had time to sort of ramp up and really own that building, but it is such an asset to our community. It's just really vibrant. My, my own daughter, Daphne, she takes dance lessons at a small independent studio in there. And sometimes while we are in there, there's noise coming from the studio next door where a woodworker has a studio. So they rent space to these creative endeavors. Um, the Squalus Puppeteers is housed there now. Um, and, and that's all just like what they have done with the building. And of course, um, they also, like all of the community ministries in Louisville, they help uh, meet people's basic needs in the community. They help uh, make sure electric bills are not being turned off. They have, um, they have had adult daycare. They have uh, sports for, for the children in the community. They feed people. They help people um, uh, meet their basic needs rent and and that sort of thing so yeah, we, we re pre referred people there before too we do so we are one of their largest financial supporters we give them about twenty two thousand dollars a year um, this past year they made a call when the pandemic started for extra financial assistance that they could pass along to clients who could not make their meet their rent so we, we sent uh, $1,400 extra in the spring specifically for them to pass along to people for, for rent assistance. And then because like a lot of other organizations, they are just having trouble meeting payroll right now, like basic expenses. So many things that would normally happen are not happening. We also sent them an extra $3,000 just to use as, as, they, as was most useful to them in the fourth quarter. We also have two members on their board, um, Highland Presidents, two members, and um, we support them in ways like collecting school supplies in the fall, the Thanksgiving baskets that we do every year. That they is go such to a their, favorite. Yeah, they go to their clients and our angel tree gifts at Christmas actually um, are delivered to their clients. Um, and then, yes, we have a relationship with um, their walk-ins and our walk-ins. If they get walk-ins who need, or their clients that they serve need to have their utilities reconnected, um, they, they won't just pay that whole bill. They need the client to do some fundraising to, to match maybe what Highland Community Ministries is able to give them. So they would send them to churches like ours who might be able to put up part of the money that they need for the matching. Um, so in that way, they send people to us. And if, if we, if you all really, if the church staff gets people who just walk in and need, have, have seen that it's a church and they know that they need basic needs met, then we send them, you all send them to Highlands Community Ministries. We do. All right, KRM, tell me that one is the, so close to home. It is. We obviously have a long history with KRM and their origins are really tied up in there in our congregation. And like kind of obviously we're still their landlord. <laughs> um, but they are one of a handful of organizations in Louisville along with primarily Catholic charities who actually does the, the nitty gritty work of helping refugees get resettled in the United States. When they're coming to Louisville, if if they are, if Louisville is where they're coming, so, so they make sure someone is at the airport to meet the new arrivals. They make sure that the new arrivals have an apartment and food in the refrigerator waiting for them. They help them get to all the various appointments and orientations that are necessary when somebody steps off the plane. Um, you know the width and breadth of what they do is vast and you don't want to hear about it all right now, but they provide lots of services to new families for everything from stocking the pantry to teaching ESL classes to basic cultural orientation, learning how to ride the bus, learning how to read a sales receipt um, and, and job search services. It's tremendous. They, they sort of keep our building inhabited during the week. They do. Um, so we have many members who are very active with KRM through various means, like their elder program. We have um, the entire Stitch program is like a Highland Prez um, KRM hybrid, our WOW group. Um, and uh, we pull together a sponsorship committee about once a year to welcome a new family. 
that is kind of like our adopted family. Um, and in addition, we take up um, collections for them, again, school supplies in the fall, and um, we, we collect for the families that we've been matched with, like furniture and home goods. Um, and then financially, we, we support KRM with $8,000 annually toward their operating budget. And we, we spend another 2,500 specifically to help the family that we're matched with. Although that, that money is often bolstered with, uh, with the gifts from congregation members. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> no, you're great. I really enjoy watching when those families come in and the pictures and the stories and the connections, those just like, they make you feel good about being a church and they, they really make you feel like you're doing something like to follow Christ, to welcome the welcoming the stranger. stranger. Yeah. 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 So those are, those are very moving moments. We celebrate those at church. Well, what about Cabbage Patch? Yeah. So Cabbage Patch, um, just to start out with the financial support this time, we, we gave them a gift of $12,000 last year. And that amount has been pretty consistent over the last few years. And um, Janet Raiderer from our church is one of their board members. She's currently acting as kind of a liaison between our committee and the Cabbage Patch to keep us up to date. So if you don't know what the patch is or what they do, do basically, they are down off Central Park um, at 6th Street in Magnolia, and they provide free or very low cost, safe afternoon and summer activities for the children who live nearby. And it's just a beautiful facility. Uh, sometimes our, our church sponsors like tour, or they invite us, members of our church for tours there. And it is, it is just a fun place to be. It's yeah. really colorful and vibrant and so enriching. They offer sports and drama and art. And they offer counseling and tutoring and peer interaction support. Um, the children who go there might have otherwise been kind of like latchkey kids who, who didn't have anything to do after school or a safe place to go for a snack and, um, you know, things to do besides watch TV or maybe even get into trouble. But the patch gives them this really enriching environment where they can go and have all of these opportunities that are open to them. There's a whole wall of there, a whole wall of pictures of kids that they have helped go to college. It's, it's really inspiring and cool. My favorite um, Cabbage Patch story is that, um, do you remember Ruth Chafin? She was our secretary of our church for over 50 years. She was a Cabbage Patch kid. Really? Okay. I didn't know that. She was uh, apparently the pastor at that time. Oh, golly. I don't remember which one it was. Reached out to the Cabbage Patch and said, do you have anybody? And we hired 19-year-old Ruth Chafins for over 50 years to serve us. Um, and it you know, I mean, if they're all like Ruth, man, that's, that's just amazing. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what's, I don't have COVID, I have <laughs> <laughs> but it's a good thing we're on zoom just in case <laughs> I have such a tickle in my throat. I'm oh, sorry. I'm so, I'm so sorry. <laughs> so, um, hopefully I just want to yak a minute more about what the cabbage sure, patch is go like ahead. In the pandemic. <laughs> So the kids that go there have a membership card and it's free, but they have to take along a parent or guardian the first time so that they get it and they sign this behavior code that they have to stick to to keep their card. So Cabbage Patch had already had this stable client base of these kids with the cards that they serve, but as the pandemic started, um, you know, they, they couldn't have kids just hanging out. So at first they shifted more to meeting the basic needs of these kids um, while everybody was staying at home. So they've got a food pantry. They're supplying hygiene items to the kids and their families. We sent four, an additional gift of $400 last spring when they said that they needed um, money to help stock that pantry. And then what's really amazing is that this fall they trans they transferred or um, translated themselves into a an NTI facility. So the kids that would have come there in the afternoon instead can go there and, and get the support that they need to do NTI, um, which, you know, non-traditional instruction to do school on the computer. I mean, it, families all over the city have had trouble meeting the needs of their students during NTI. So you just can't plunk a kid down in front of the screen <laughs> and expect all of that magic to happen without a human in the room with the kid. 
um, which is why it's so hard. Like the schools cannot provide a, a person in the room. All they can do is provide a person on the screen, but you actually just have to have a person in the room sometimes, at least sometimes for the kids of all ages. So Cabbage Patch is, is doing that for the kids that go there. They are, um, they are having NTI right there with, uh, with humans in the room on the, on the kids' side of the screen. Yeah, and it's really cool. Yeah, I mean, the amount of, of help I have to give my own kids just to log on and log off and turn stuff in digitally. It's it's a huge learning curve. So I'm, I'm sure. And I mean, at high school, it's different. But I mean, I am still often getting emails that say, you know, ask your kid if they can show you. <laughs> no, my kid can, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm glad I'm there to do the asking. <laughs> right, right. Uh, those are amazing. That I'm so now excited for when we're back together and can do more. Because they, they can't take volunteers now, of course, because of the pandemic. Right. So it's all their staff who, you know, used to work in the afternoon and now they work in the morning. <laughs> wow. Well, that's, that's amazing. So you've, you've done this for a long time on Church in the World. You've worked with many organizations and, and people on that committee too. There, you've had some great people over the years. Tell me your, your favorite memory of church in the world. Oh, or yeah. Barclay, I have no. I've been on the committee a long time. I think I was on it when Dor when Dorothy was a toddler. So almost all of my time at, um, at Highland Prez and I, Dorothy was still like in the eating crayon stage when I first started bringing her. <laughs> well, I remember you used to be in there with Daphne, like in her little bucket beside you leading meetings. I have that memory pretty vividly. <laughs> it's adorable. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I have lots of favorite memories, um, but my absolute favorite, um, I was on a sponsorship team when we were meeting a KRM family at the airport, and I think I was like 39 weeks pregnant with Worth, who was born on his due date, so he would be born about a week. Wow. I, I have almost four-year-old Dorothy there with me, and you know, sometimes it's awkward going to meet a new family. They are always glad to be there and we are always glad to see them. But um, in this case, the family had no English and we had a translator, but this family's bags were delayed and they ended up getting the bags that they had brought with them. But, um, but there was a long time that we had to spend at the airport um, where the translator was tied up with just the father from this family and, um, and our team leader trying to figure out where their bags were. And the rest of their, um, their family and our team were just sitting there and it was kind of awkward. You know, like obviously we're all well-meaning, but there's a cultural barrier, there's a language barrier. Right. Um, and um, Dorothy sat on the ground and had a, a a pad of paper and a pencil and she drew like a stick figure that obviously had this enormous belly <laughs> just like I did and then she drew like an anatomically correct baby boy <laughs> inside it <laughs> right and was like showing them all like this is my mom like I'm gonna have a brother <laughs> and everybody just laughed it was such an icebreaker and it was so human and and universal and all of a sudden it wasn't it wasn't awkward anymore. And we just sat there and like watched Dorothy draw and giggled and had a great time. That is so a wonderful light was shining all around. Right. Right. Oh, that's, oh, that's beautiful. I love it. That's so great. Well, Renata, for a couple of more minutes, you have the entire attention of all of HPC or the subset that's watching. Um, <laughs> what do you want to tell them? What do you wish I'd asked you? What else do you want to share? Well, I guess that, you know, if you found this Thursday morning chat to be particularly <laughs> riveting, or you were like really compelled by the things that we are, we are saying, there is always room for you on the Church in the World Committee. We meet on the first Wednesday of the month on Zoom at 630, and we would welcome you in one of those seats. What, what if it's a youth? Would you welcome a youth in one of those seats? You bet. We have Abby Sakula. She's one of our best members, and we would... Awesome. We would love to have more youth. Absolutely. Thanks. Well, um, Renata, you've been delightful. And I can't wait for our next Mama Rita's um, to see you again on Zoom, but one day in person. So um, thank Bye. you so much for being here or thank being you, there, Julie. but being here. Um, all right, Highland, next Very week. Very nice. I can't wait till we're all back together. Yes. 
Next week, Highland, Thursday morning, we'll have another Thursday morning chat, this time with three of our newly elected deacons, Steve Holmes, Amy Hoyt, and Joanne Utter. It should be at least a lot of laughs. So I hope you will join us next Thursday morning. And thank you again, Renata, and everybody just have a great week. Bye. Bye.